you all. So I know it's been a couple of days since I released a, a video. Sorry about that. I was slightly under the weather recently, but um, back in action and I had to uh, reload my machine. So you'll notice for this video and the next couple of them, my software I'm using slightly changed, at least just that way until my replacement SSD drive arrives. Anyway, that doesn't stop uh, us from uh, going through some of the later software. So, at the moment, what we're going to be looking at today is Linux Mint 21. So, it's important to realize that uh, Mint 21, and we're going to be using the Cinnamon Edition, is still in beta uh, and should be released pretty soon. Is... Mint is, of course, considered, you know, Ubuntu, but Ubuntu for newcomers to get started with and is generally considered a lot easier for a lot of people. And, you know, I thought, hey, it's been a long time since I've looked at Mint. Now, in the past, many years ago, I used to run Mint when it was Mint 13 and 14, back in the days of when Mint only released on the Ubuntu RTS versions. So I haven't tried it for a long time, so I'm really, really intrigued to see how it's going to operate. So just waiting for it to start up quickly here in VMware. Let's give it a couple of seconds. Um, important to note, of course, uh, this is the normal Mint that is based on Ubuntu, and this release of Mint is based on Ubuntu. 2204. So, so, our first look at the desktop. Sorry about the birds in the background there. So, the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, fix the resolution. So, I'm going to go to system settings. I'm going to expand this. I'm going to go down to display. And let's get to a proper resolution. Which, yep, keep it, looks fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is quickly run through the install process, and then we'll, we'll go through the OS together once it's fully installed. So, of course, like most distros, double-click on the installer, and wait for it to actually do something. Now, while we wait for that, why did I choose cinnamon? Well, mint comes in three flavors, cinnamon, Mate Tomate and of course XFCE. Cinnamon started off as a slight offshoot of GNOME 3 or GNOME and the Linux Mint developers were kind of went in their own direction with that interface. And of course it's just continued to grow and it's available on the other interfaces. Uh, here we have of course English. I'm going to continue. US keyboard layout. I'll be sure to give the next VM a definitely a little bit more memory. It's a tad a little slow here, but I'll increase the memory after it's installed. Uh, multimeter codecs, we're not going to install them now. Again, in the past, uh, Mint was also very popular because back then, when you installed Ubuntu, you didn't have the option to select the install multimeter codex during installation option back then you know you would have to go manually do it after you'd installed it which a lot of distros were like that and of course now linux mint back then was actually pretty easy to get to that point you know it would just come pre-installed with it and of course in recent years they've also opted to do it this way um erase the disk advanced features that's fine, we're not going to do any LVMs, and we're not going to encrypt the disk. Let's go to install now. Uh, and by default, I believe it will use ext4, so let's uh, continue. So far, really simple, really clean installer, uh, not giving the user too many options. Uh, that's fine, I'm not too worried about the region. I'm just going to hit next. Uh, put in my name, well, of course, my name is Gosh. Choose an extremely strong and secure password. Require my password to log in. 
I'm not going to encrypt my home folder, but it is a good idea if you are using a portable appliance. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the uh, install now. Basically, it's just a slideshow you can go through, but I'm going to pause and I'll resume once it's installed. Okay, so installation is finished. Uh, it didn't take too long. Uh, the mirrors are a little slow today, but that's fine. So I'm just going to hit restart now and let it come back up automatically. So why would I use Linux Mint? Great question. Um, and you know, I'm not going to lie. It's a question I've often thought about as well. You know, you've got Ubuntu out there. Why would you use Mint? And I think there's definitely a couple of aspects of Mint that make it a lot easier for a newer user. It definitely tends to walk one through everything a little easier. Now, can you achieve the same with Ubuntu? Of course you can. You could really, if you put the time on anything, you could achieve the same thing with any distro. You could even do the same with Slackware if you really wanted to. But, you know, Mint has got the name out there. There's a couple of portable PCs that come out already with it pre-installed. So, I think it's actually a really fascinating distro to use. So, let's uh, deep dive it a bit more. I think it's also important to remember with Mint... It does not come with a proprietary drivers like Ubuntu, so for your video cards, so you would have to install that afterwards. Which, personally, I think is a real shame. I think a lot of other distros now, especially in the Arch space, you know, and all of its derivatives uh, have gotten really good and made it easier for video users. Anyway, so here we are. And as you can see here, we have this new Linux Mint uh, welcome screen. Now, someone like me that hasn't used Mint for a long time, I don't know when the screen first came out, so I'm not going to even lie. What I like, though, is it's got this first step, so let's expand this a bit. And, of course, here, do we want light or dark mode? Right, I'm going to choose dark mode. I just prefer it. It's easy on the eyes. Panel layout, do you want a traditional layout, which is more old school? Right, so you know where it's small panels and individual window lists, or do you want to know a new modern, which is large panels and grouped windows? Yes, kind of what Windows 11 does these days. You know, everything is under this little icon. Uh, do you want to use system snapshots, uh, driver manager? So if you were using some proprietary software, your driver manager, which I suspect should be the same tool that Ubuntu uses. I take that back. It's their own tool. Sorry about that. Um, just leave that in the background. I don't think it's actually going to pick anything up. This isn't a virtual machine. Update manager, system settings manager, firewall. So let's uh, launch firewall here. Okay, just have my password again. And I'm trying to look at this from a new user point of view, not as a advanced Windows user. Windows user Linux, or Windows user, should I say. As you can see, it's UFW, and for most users, it's easy to just hit it on, allow, deny, etc. Now, depending on your level of comfort skills with Windows, Mac, Linux, this might be foreign to you. So I'm going to quit that. Uh, we don't need any additional drivers like we knew. Uh, system settings, we actually looked at earlier over here, so... All the system settings are brought out. And, of course, this is a feature of Cinnamon interface. You go and install Cinnamon on a different distro, and you'll get most of these options here. Like if I go to System Info, you'll see it's using uh, one of the newer Linux kernels, Mint 21. And you can see it's running on my i7, and I gave it 4 gigs of memory. Multimedia codex, let's launch that. Now, remember, we didn't choose that option during install. So here we could just hit Install. Uh, cannot install Mint, you, ha you have held broken packages. Uh, that's not helpful. I guess it's because we need to update. So let's do a quick update. Let's launch it. And of course, really great explanation of security updates, system snapshots, software updates, etc. And I believe in the past, uh, 
Mint has um, made a couple of updates automatic in the background because the distro found that people wouldn't go and update their distro. Remember something like this isn't like uh, Arch where people go and update uh, it every day or every few hours. Um, let us let DPKG continue updating here. Really cool, really great. Oh, wow, that was quick. Okay. It's loading again. And we have a whole bunch of updates. Do we want to switch to local mirror? Yes, please. Uh, type my password again. Mint isn't shy of asking you for your password. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, must I now choose my own location? Will it do it for me? Okay, let's just pick this one here. I'm not too worried. Okay, so that's the base. Let's choose that. Let's say okay. Update the cache. Nice that it gives us a little option. And of course, you can see here it also gives you the option of PPAs, additional repos, authentications, maintenance, etc. So something to know that uh, Mint um, does not use uh, Systemd's function of uh, memory management. So Ubuntu recently came under fire for terminating applications automatically when the system was low in memory. Uh, Mint uh, doesn't actually use that functionality, which is possibly a good thing right now, at least until Ubuntu can tweak its settings. Um, also, this does not use Snaps either, so uh, I believe that Mint has gone and ripped Snaps out of the OS. Again, up to you, depending on how you feel about Snaps. Let us let this continue updating and take a relook for the rest of the OS. So, of course, here, you know, a file, so they make use of the Nemo file manager, which is an off-split of one of the older versions of Nautils. Now, it's like any file manager, dual screen, click, you know, yay, nothing really much there to show you, in all honesty. An image viewer, file rename manager, checkboard, screenshots, wallpinator, that's to allow you to send and receive a dedicated files. Web apps app, which uh, Mint Team Design. So essentially, you can go here and create an app. And I say that in inverted commas of a website. So it just shows up in your application list. Um, hot corners, notification, online accounts. You know, basically these days, and I, I, I'm af almost afraid to say it. There is not a lot of difference between Linux distros. Um, unfortunately, that is just just the case of it. Uh, we've used 1.1 gigs of memory, basically. Uh, we've got a good amount of disk space that's left here. We've used roughly about 26% of it, and still kernel 5.15, at least until it updates. And we had this built on June the 9th. So yeah, why use this instead of Ubuntu? Well, if you prefer, if you don't like a normal GNOME, GNOME or you don't like the normal Ubuntu store, or you maybe want a little bit more hand-holding, use Mint. Uh, Mint will stay up to date. It will continue using the LTS base for the next two years until the next Ubuntu LTS base comes out. And of course, the software that runs on Ubuntu 2204 is going to run on here. Uh, so you won't have an issue. Um, you know, if you just prefer something to be a little bit simpler, you know, hey, why, why not? Um, it's got some good documentation that's out there. Great to see, you know, even a new features list. So if I just hit launch, uh, you'll see I actually changed the highlighting colors option quite easily. How you can contribute to the OS. Again, this review kind of feels more like a window manager review. You know, if I was to go and install Cinnamon on Ubuntu, I'm going to get a very similar experience. I'll 
might have to do more work but it's pretty similar and you can see you know in 21 they've at least improved uh, the bluetooth capability uh, thumbnails sticky notes process monitor and of course some of the x apps improvements and of course using a new rebase of cinnamon on 5.4 uh, also important to notice in recent times it definitely you know in the past cinnamon did look slightly outdated again depends who you ask but you can definitely see there's also been a a good attempt or good work um, kind of making it look a little bit more modern uh, by today's standards and you know normal stuff change your desktop backgrounds right click the option that's going to be there um, you want to open a screw, you want to customize your screen layouts, your icon layouts, it's all here. You know, do you want to add a desklet? You're, you might ask, what the heck is a desklet? It's just one of these things, basically. Look here, whoo, on the clock. Uh, and like with KDE, I and mean, let's be honest, you can download, find uh, some other desklets and just uh, install them uh, once it actually does it you would install it go back to manage select it hit the plus button and it will come on the screen um, so let's say here we have a weather desk let i'm just going to hit download here right so it's installing it if i go to manage here it is, hit the button, and of course, uh, you know, here it is. I would still have to configure it manually, you know, right click, configure it, um, and I could do all of that. Um, uh, nice little, but again, this is a feature of Cinnamon, not uh, Mint. Um, yeah, so my suggestion is if you're already a Mint user and you're happy with it, Continue using it if you prefer Ubuntu's base, but uh, don't want to deal with snap packs and you want it slightly customized to be a bit easier and maybe use Cinnamon, Mate, or XFCE. You can't go wrong with Mint, uh, it's got some good backing, very popular distros. So, yeah, Mint team, well done! And as always, everyone would love to hear your comments. Thanks for watching and bye for now.